मु अनुरोध करी टू प्रेजेंट हिज ओपिनियन एंड ऑल्सो टू समिट अप प्रोफेसर किशोर कुमार बासा वाइस चांसलर महाराजा श्री रामचंद्र यूनिवर्सिटी टू काइंडली कम फॉरवर्ड एंड शेयर हिज वर्ड्स विद अस समस्त को नमस्कार आई एम ग्रेटफुल टू द आर्गस फैमिली for inviting me to this august occasion to discuss and deliberate and to learn about the challenges of education all of us claim that we are educated rightly so but then why this education new education policy nobody challenges us that we had a very distinct and very substantial mode of imparting education in our ancient times be it takshila or nalanda or vikramshila or our Lalit Giri, Ratna Giri, and Uday Giri. Those were also the universities. <clears throat> Now, some people, some historians say that until the Renaissance, until 13th, 13th century, perhaps India and the rest of the world were at par. But it is the Renaissance, I think, which made a fundamental break, and perhaps. india lagged behind and perhaps the worst thing happened as has been suggested by my distinguished colleagues about the macaule mode of education the macaule mode of education wanted to create some job seekers who would remain slave to the colonial system well after independence two educational policies were uh, done i think uh, 1960s and then the 1986 and the attempt was how to decolonize our education system but perhaps we did not succeed much therefore the 2020 new education policy is a challenge for all of us because it is a model it is an ideal it is an aspiration how india could become a knowledge society and a knowledge economy in 21st century not at the cost of the values which which are is most in india but taking those values and keeping an open mind a fine blending of what is the best in us and what is the best from outside that is the essence of new education policy i must say that i am fortunate that i attended the uh sikya samagam held in baranasi for 3 days from 7th of february to 9th of february which was inaugurated by the honorable prime minister and the, mind you the entire education ministry when i say entire the cabinet minister minister of state ugc chairman aict chairman name who and who of higher education all of them attended these three days and i must say that uh, i was very fortunate to have attended that and i have submitted a report on that to the honorable chancellor's office i also attended yesterday the uh, completion of two years of new education policy and uh, certain new initiatives initiatives have been inaugurated or were were uh, given to the nation by the union home minister yesterday and i must say that i just arrived from delhi and i'm coming straight to this place the point is let me sum up what my distinguished panelists have said there is a diversity in their views and there is also con convergence diversity in the sense that 
Professor Joyshwal is a director of Indian Institute of Management, Sambalpo. Professor Srikant Mahapatra has an excellent track record of what is known as open university system. And Dr. Umankanta Das represents, who is the director of uh, the Institute of Rural Management, Anand, who, which we know as a kind of, uh, is a kind of textbook uh, story, how uh, an organization based on cooperative could be so successful. So you, you heard the different perspectives because they represent three different groups of institutions uh, which will cater to the needs of higher education scenario. Now, just to recapitulate uh, uh, what Professor Joyce all said, he uh, underscored resurgence in three, uh, three manners or three aspects of resurgence in Indian society. First, with digitization and sustainability and democratization. I think to me, digitization and sustainability, there are some kind of people used to say that these are the buzzwords. But to me, democratization in the name of startup, I think it is going to be a very important uh, feature in the next in the years to come. He also suggested or emphasized about creative knowledge. Uh, <coughs> taking advantage of the demographic, demographic dividend of India. My friend, uh, Professor Srikant Mahapatra, uh, was highlighting how India could be a knowledge superpower and uh, on the basis of equity, equality, affordability, flexibility, Indianization and internalization, internationalization. And he, he also emphasized on the blended mode of technology in terms of uh, teaching learning and how TB is going to play a very important role in years to come. Dr. Mankanta Das was emphasizing the importance of cooperation. You see, that is the value of Indian, Indian knowledge system. We do not compete with each other. We cooperate with each other. We handhold each other. Now, his organization represents that. So we, he, he doesn't have to say in words. If you want to know what is the success of cooperative movement, we can go to Anand. So here is an uh, Indian model or Indian uh, system which uh, has some relevance to the rest of the world. He also emphasized on the vernacular mode of uh, instruction. We tend, we, some of us, we think that unless you speak in English, perhaps you are not able to connect to the rest of the world. Yes. English is a language to be connected with the rest of the world. Nobody denies that. But it cannot be a substitute for your rootedness. Because if you do not have a root, then I'm, then I'm afraid the language that you will be using will be nothing but superficial. Therefore, it is important that we should give equal impact, emphasis on vernacular mode of instruction, which new education policy uh, <coughs> provides adequate scope. Now, let me come back to the questions of, let's say, what is, in my view, uh, is important. You know, so all of us know about the flexibility of the system in the uh, new education policy because the rigid mindset of, you know, if, somebody's, if somebody would study arts, he would study arts. You know, <laughs> I don't know whether this system exists now or not. I think Professor Himang Supatna is here. During our time, if you are a student of history, you can't take mathematics. You know, this kind of rigidity we, we had. Uh, so I think, forget about within arts, point now the, the, a boy or a girl has choice to move from one discipline to the another discipline. He, has, he or she has every right to know, pursue the knowledge he or she wants. But then, the important thing to be borne in mind is that there is an integration between the academic, academia and skill. I think here is a big challenge for all of us because when we say skill, you know, we Indians, 
sometimes you say that skill is relatively inferior. Unless until you do some white collar job, you are not an elite. New education policy dismantles that kind of arrogance or condescending attitude. Skill is as important as your uh, sort of the classroom teaching of any other subject. And then new education policy also envisages that if you are doing some kind of skill education, you can come back. You can come back to the formal academic curricula as well. Now, previously it, it used to be there, but now it has been made more sort of integrating. So, therefore, if somebody is doing something in skill, after some time, he can come back to the kind of academic uh, curricula. This academic bank of credit, then sort of sifting of one place to another, all these things are there. But another important aspect is that I am more concerned with Odisha. Now, to me, we should use this new education policy in creating an aspirational society because our students are very good at fundamentals. Oh, I mean, I have got certain reservation about my distinguished panelist. Yes, technology is important. Technology is very important and nobody can sort of dispense with technology in terms of teaching learning, in terms of research, in terms of startups, in terms of innovation. Nobody denies that. But at the end of the day, Technology cannot be a substitute for human being because it is the human being should control economy, technology rather than technology determining the, the, the quality of individual. Because we are heading towards that. This question of artificial intelligence, the question of machine learning are challenges. Of course those are challenges. But I must caution that if depending on technology, to enhance your quality of knowledge is fine. But depending on technology to reduce your knowledge is dangerous. I'm giving you an example. You know, these days if you ask in multiplication, the American kids are now, they do not know, they just go to the calculator. I think so much of dependence, I think, is not desirable. The basic arithmetic, Indian students are strong because they are strong in basic arithmetic. We should not lose that in the name of technology. Now, coming to Odisha again, I think in the next 20 years, Odisha should be the destination of international students. I think the process has started. But for that, and I urge upon my my students, you need to change a difference in perspective. Because how to welcome a foreigner? How to welcome a black African? Because if you see a, a black African, then you say, are, are, kya kala hai, karke, you know, you just, that will not do. If you want, there, there should be a change of perspective among both students and the teachers and the civil society. Because racism, we, all, we always say it exists in Africa or in America, but I think, please interrogate yourself how much racist we are. So, if you want to make Odisha as an international destination of uh, students and scholars, it is important that we should have a change in mindset. And I'm sure we'll have many international students, because this is a challenge, because India at the moment, if I'm not incorrect, is getting about 50,000 foreign students every year, but we are sending 10 lakh students abroad. So we have to make a balance, and Odisha should take advantage of this. Now, when we speak about Odisha also, I think one has to make a balance between what is local and the global. In the name of the global, we should not, and I insist, we should not ignore our local identity or local level research or local resources, because if a foreigner is coming, mind you, he, he or she is coming to find out how you are using your local resources, how you are using your local talent, how you are using you, 
how you are making the local resources to make a better society. That is the reason he will be coming to, you, to, 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 to India, or more particularly Odisha. Therefore, we have to create best practices in, in augmenting the course of local traditions. When I, am, when I am saying local resources or local knowledge system, I am not saying that one should be parochial. I am not saying that I will claim that Odias are the best under the sun. I am not saying that. But on the other hand, I would say that we should be proud of what we, are, we should be proud of. And lastly, I am coming from a university in, the, in an area where there is substantial tribal population. So as a vice chancellor of Maharaja Sri Ramchandra Bhansa University, my challenge is how to enhance the aspiration of the first generation of tribal youth who are coming to higher education. So on the one hand, we are talking of internalization and competing with the rest of the world. And on the other hand, they are in the gross enrollment ratio, our districts are not doing well. So how do I combine to face the challenge of gross enrollment ratio, enhancing the gross enrollment ratio on the one hand, and preparing my tribal youth to compete with the rest of the world. Now, that's the challenge we have to face. But, having said that, I must say that education is a great enabler. Education is a mighty leveler. Education is a, is a weapon through which India can win the rest of the world. Can we do it? I think the challenge, the challenge is for all of us, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much.